Hi, welcome to Traffic Operations class or CE402502. My name is Dr. Adi Haj Babai. I am with the Department of Civil, Construction and Environmental Engineering at North Carolina State University. And through the rest of this video, I will go through the syllabus of this course and hopefully over the next dozens of videos that I will be uploading, we will cover important topics in traffic operations. We will have office hours on Zoom. You can find the times on your syllabus. You have a teaching assistant whose information is also available on your syllabus. Course website is Moodle and all the communications will be via email or Moodle announcements. Let's talk about the main purpose of this course. So what we want to do here is to teach our students the main concepts of traffic operations. And the topics that we will be talking about are data collection, traffic flow theory, highway capacity analysis, and level of service. We'll be talking about signalized intersection design and analysis. And at the end of this course, we expect the students to be able to analyze different uh, highway facilities, find the level of service. We expect the students to be able to conduct data collection and analyze the data and pretty much be familiar with a wide range of topics under traffic operations. Our textbook is Traffic Engineering. We use the fifth edition. This textbook is required and this is an excellent book and available to you through the bookstore. The online version is available at a very reasonable price. There are also materials that we will be covering from the Highway Capacity Manual. Okay, let's talk about the topics that we will be covering. After this class, we will start with traffic control devices. We get to know different signs, different uh, markings, and also signals. Then we talk about traffic stream characteristics. For example, you're going to learn what is flow, what is density, what's speed, and so on. We will be talking about traffic data collection, reduction, and traffic studies. Then we start our discussion about uninterrupted flow. So essentially what you see on freeway facilities and multi-lane highway facilities. Then we will be talking about basic freeway segments and basic multi-lane segments. Then we talk about merge, diverge, and weaving segments. At this point, we have talked about all different segments on freeway facilities, so we will start talking about freeway facilities as a system, not individual segments. Then we start talking about unsignalized intersections. Uh, we cover two-way stop control intersections and roundabouts. Then we talk about signalized intersections. We talk about pre-time control and actuated control. And finally, we talk about signal coordination. You can see the weight of each component uh, of this course in your final grade. So homework is going to have a 10% weight. Your midterm exam, 35%. Final exam, 35% and literature review paper that is going to be 20%. So the literature review paper for undergrad and grad students is a little bit different in terms of the number of papers that you will be going to cover. Also keep in mind that your midterm and final exams are going to be on Moodle and you can check the dates on your syllabus. We are using NC State University's uh, typical cutoff points for grading in this course. So A plus would be between 97 to 100 percent, A between 93 percent up to 97 percent, and so on. We will have two exams, one midterm and one final, and uh, the dates are given to you on your syllabus. These exams are not comprehensive, so whatever is covered in your exam two is not going to be directly showing up on the second exam, but that doesn't mean that uh, you don't need to know the material. So make sure that you know the materials, but also keep in mind that there will not be a direct question from something that was covered on the first exam. 
You will have six homework assignments in this course that add up to 10% of your final grade. If you decide to work together, please just make sure that you need to submit your own work. Now that we are done with course introduction, let's start talking about traffic control devices. Now, what <clears throat> is the purpose of traffic control devices? The main purpose is to communicate traffic control decisions with road users or the drivers that are on our roads. So if you want a, a, a movement to stop, uh, you need to communicate that with the traffic. One way of communicating that is to put a stop sign. One way of communicating that is to put a traffic light. And by traffic control devices, we mean these types of devices. There is a manual uh, that is called Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices, uh, or we always call it MUTCD. So this manual is all about how these devices need to be placed, how they should be designed, where they need to be, and a lot of details about that. And I encourage you to take a look at it. And many of the things that we discussed today and also are in your book about traffic control devices are coming from this manual. Now, first, I want to talk about uh, the general criteria for traffic control devices. When, when do we use them and how do we use them? So first and most important thing is that they need to fulfill a need. So we don't put a traffic control devices at a place that there is no for it. For example, if you don't want to stop traffic, you don't put a stop sign or you don't put a traffic light. So if there is a need that something needs to be done, then we are going to have traffic control devices. They need to attract the attention of those who are using the highway facility. They need to attract the attention of drivers, bikers, transit system drivers, pedestrians, everyone. The last thing that you want to do is that you want to have a sign that you put it there and you use that in your design and then nobody pay attention, pays attention to that. Because if no one pays attention, what happens is that they are not going to do whatever is requested from them. The third um, criterion is that Traffic control devices need to give a very clear and simple message. They have to be designed in a way that road users understand them very easily. You don't need to spend 5 to 10 seconds to understand what you see on a traffic light or a stop sign. When you see it, you know what it means, right? So traffic control devices need to be there, need to be designed like that. They also need to command respect of road users. So you need to respect um, the device and the, and, and, and the uh, information that it provides to you. Otherwise, you're not going to follow with that, with that. And then they have to also provide enough time for response. So what do I mean by that? If you put a stop sign somewhere that by the time that the drivers see the stop sign, it's too late to stop, you're not providing adequate time for drivers to, to respond to, to that sign, right? So always these signs need to be designed in a way that they are visible and they are placed at a location that is not blocked by anything and also they provide enough time for a driver, for a pedestrian, for a bicyclist to, to respond to them properly. 
So when you go over MUTCD, uh, you will see uh, sentences um, or statements that they are either a standard, they are a guidance, they are an option or a support. And I want you to know the difference between those. So a standard is statement of a required or prohibited practice. Okay? When you read a sentence that is talking about the standard, you see the word shall or shall not. That means that this is this sentence is telling you something that either needs to be done or cannot be done. If it's done, it's illegal. Okay? Guidance is the next level. So it's a recommendation. It's not mandatory. If you read a sentence that is providing guidance, it's going to have the word should or should not. So option, we are going another level farther from a standard. Option is telling you something that you can do. It's just an extra option. When you read a sentence that provides you an option or talks about an option, it says may or may not. And support is pure information. So whenever you read a sentence that is just providing extra information and you don't see words shall or shall not, should or should not, and may or may not, none of these, that means that that is a support uh, sentence. So when we talk about traffic control devices, we talk about signs, uh, we talk about markings, signals, and uh, some special controls that uh, we talk about them later. So one thing that is the most important thing is uniformity. And what I mean by that is that you want to use the same color, the same shape, the same text on the sign or on your devices to give the same information. Okay. So for example, uh, we use colors to give the same information. Red always is telling you to stop if it's on a signal, right? You cannot go. It's on a stop sign. It tells you you cannot go. If you have green, it tells you that you can go, right? So we don't use red for stopping vehicles and also for letting them go. Red means stop. For example, orange always means be cautious, right? Shape. So we use several shapes and each shape means something. For example, yield sign is always a triangle, right? So we know that when we see a shape of triangle, it's either yield sign or something else, but it's, it's clear that uh, triangle is used for only a certain uh, messages that we want to convey. The same is with pattern, and it's mostly for pavement marking. For example, if you have double lines, it means that you cannot pass the line, right? And legend is the text that goes on the side, uh, on, the, on a sign or on a symbol. For example, we write stop on a stop sign, right? That's the legend. And we want also the legend to be uniform. So let's talk uh, about uh, different traffic control uh, device types. Um, so we have markings, we have signs, we have signals, okay? So markings are either, either longitudinal, uh, like the markings that you see for passing, not passing, um, or designating lanes. You have transverse markings. Also, we have object markers and delineators. What I mean by object markers, when you have an object and then we, we have we have marking on the object or delineators are the small signs that for example you see on the side of the road usually four feet high 
that uh, sometimes they reflect the, uh, the, the light and they show you uh, how you need to control your vehicle so that you don't go out of the roadway. Uh, signs can be uh, regulatory, warning or guide signs. Signals we have for traffic control, we have for pedestrian, emergency vehicle, uh, one lane, two way, um, ramp meters and so on. And there are a number of variants for traffic signals that uh, we go over them to justify when a traffic signal needs to be used. And I talk about them later on when we talk about traffic signals. Now, I want you, go to, I want you to go to your book uh, and uh, start looking at chapter 4 and read from section 4.2 to 4.4. And in this section, we see a lot of uh, useful information on traffic control devices. So that's the end of this lecture. I told you it's a quick one and uh, we continue in next lectures.